Happy Wednesday. How are we doing? Hey, we are having tonight, we are having shepherd's pie for our fellowship. If you're going to be in the area, please come and have shepherd's pie with us, huh? Have some shepherd's pie with us tonight. Give me a call and I will give you directions. We're also going to have some dessert and some salad and some sauce of the apple. Hey, say this and with also me. also a vegetable beef stew. Vegetable beef stew. Well, I'll bet some of I'll bet some of that is from that roost we had last night, huh? Yes. Yeah. Hey, say this with us. The rest of my life. The rest of my life is the best of my life. Is the best of my life. Do you believe that? I believe that. I know you do. Hey, did I promise? <laughs> I said on Wednesday, you know who would be here. I'm here. And here she <laughs> is. You got a merry minute for us? Yes. Go ahead. Honey. Well, you know, when you take a shower in the bathroom, the mirror gets all fogged up. Foggy. Foggy. It gets real foggy. Our mirror does anyway. And I was thinking, you know, that's we need to keep that mirror clean so we can see clearly the words of God. So, in order to clean off the mirror, you have to blow it with the blower, the hair, the hair dryer. And <laughs> who's given this merry minute? I'm just helping. <laughs> so you have to clean off the mirror with the hair dryer, and that's the Holy Spirit that makes things clear again. So don't let the devil fog up your mirror. Oh, <laughs> don't let the devil fog up your mirror, huh? Hey, you know, the way we do things around here is <laughs> if I'm doing something, she bosses. Do you hard. Bo I boss hard. She bosses hard. If she's doing something, I try to boss. But you can see, <laughs> she doesn't... She it doesn't always work that way. In the past, and I'm being careful what I say here, in the past, she has not taken direction real well. <laughs> so we're working on that, aren't we? Uh, no. You're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey... The rest of my life is the best of my life. We are talking about the blessing today. And uh, also, if you if there's any prayer requests, please call me. We have an incredible record of getting prayers answered. I absolutely can get your prayers answered for you. If you have something you want or you need, I can get it done for you. I mean, I can get it done. All we do is agree in prayer, and you sit back, no fussing, no asking questions, sit back and watch it happen. And it will. It absolutely will. So if you need something today, please call me. Hey, we're talking about this book, The Blessing. But before that book can work in your life, you got to get a hold of what's in this one. The power of positive words. I tell people this. If your words are not under control, there's nothing I can do for you. If you're fussing and asking questions, and every time I speak over you or pray for you, you go, what about this and what about that? I will get to a point where there's nothing I can do for you. Amen? We don't want to get to that point. We don't want to get to that point where there's nothing we can do for you. Amen? So you've got to just believe I can do it and sit back and receive it. And I'll make it happen for you. Amen. Today, we're talking about why the curse of the law must be broken. Why it must be broken. And we can see here we are in this book, we have a chapter called The Curse of the Law and Redemption. The Curse of the Law and Redemption. I want to show you something. And it, it says at the very beginning, the first statement in this chapter says, If the curse of the law was not operating in your life, you would live in perfect health and become rich very quickly. If the curse of the law was not 
operating in your life. You would live in health and become rich very quickly. Now you think about that. Also, if you're not living in health and you don't have enough money to pay your bills, the curse of the law is operating in your life. Now, I know Christ has redeemed us. But he redeemed us from sickness too, didn't he? Yet churches are full of sick people. Pastors have brought me to their church simply because there's so many sick people. One bishop told his church, large, huge church, he said, we brought Pastor Kibler here because there's so much sickness. Because there's so much sickness. I remember him saying that. There should not be sickness in the body of Christ. Jesus paid the price. He redeemed us from sickness. There should not be poverty in the body of Christ because he redeemed us. Somebody said they don't know what I'm talking about. You better know what I'm talking about. You better figure out what I'm talking about. Amen. You can tell if the, if the curse of the law is operating in the lives of people if, if, if You can tell if when the curse of the law is operating in people's lives if they're sick and broke. If they are sick and broke and are not increasing and don't have enough money to pay their bills <clears throat> on a continual basis, I'm telling you what, the curse of the law is still operating in their life. And that situation will not be remedied until, until, It will not be remedied until that curse of the law is broken. Let me tell you something, folks. You make a bad comment on this, and I will block you. We're not going to listen to that crap. Amen. This is for people who want to believe God's word. Here's the thing. The curse of the law and the blessing of Abraham cannot occupy the same person are the same space. Air and water cannot occupy the same space. This is my coffee thing. I carry my coffee in that. Sometimes I put water in it and everything. Right now, there's nothing in it but ice and just a little bit of coffee. If I fill that up with water, you can't put air in it. Air won't fit in it if it's full of water. If I pour the water out, air automatically comes into it. If you pour the curse of the law out of your life through the power and the name of Jesus, the blessing automatically comes in. I want that to sink in. When we get rid of the curse, the blessing comes in. The blessing cannot come into your life as long as the curse is there and is active. It must be removed. It must be evicted. Evicted. Or you will never be blessed. Now you can believe God for money to pay the rent. And, and at the end of the month, you'll get the money to pay the rent. 
if your faith is strong enough. But you will never increase on a steady basis. The power to get wealth will not work in your life. Riches and honor will not be part of your life as long as the curse is there. Because the curse will block it. Once we get rid of that curse, then the obstacle to the blessing is gone. When it's gone, the blessing comes flowing into your life. Comes over you. Oh my goodness, people. When that happens, debt goes away. Stress goes away. You have money to pay your bills. And it doesn't happen overnight usually, but it happens over a period of months. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. God's word is seed. The seed is planted and it grows. But let me tell you something. It works, it works, it works, it works. We broke the curse of the law in our life. When the Lord showed me how to do this. I have never ever. In all the years I have been in the word of faith circles. And been around all these high powered word of faith people. You, you turn on your TV and chances are I've been around those people. Or have a, have a very good knowledge of them and their message. And I have never heard any of them preach about breaking the curse of the law. Although some of them have done it. Some of them have done it. But I have never said, heard anybody ever say, you got to break the curse to get the blessing. Nobody else has ever had that revelation. Except me. And you know how I got it? God had to speak it to me. He had to show me in his word where that's true. He had to show it to me. And when he did, I broke that curse. Five months later, $295,000 worth of debt had evaporated. And we had more money than we needed. And we have had more money than we need Ever since. And now the blessing is accelerating in our life. I'm telling you what people. I don't know about you. But I have never lived like I am living right now. And there is absolutely no reason why you can't have what I have. No reason at all. If you'll just believe this. If you'll just accept that and receive it, I'm telling you what, I can make it happen for you. Because I know how to do it. I'm probably one of the very few people in the entire country who knows how to get the blessing of God to come upon somebody. Ask your pastor. Say, Pastor Jones, or whatever his name is, how do I get the blessing of God to come upon me? He'll talk and talk and talk, but he don't know. I do. You call me today, and I'll make that blessing come upon you. I'll make it happen for you. Tell everybody you know about this video. Share these videos on the blessing with everybody you know. I'm telling you what, there should be 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 people watching every one of these videos. Because we want to get the blessing. In, you, can you imagine what a force the Christian church would be if they were all walking in the blessing of God? I can make that happen. But you got to help me. Share this video. I am out of time. I got to go. Remember, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. Share this video.